here so I have a cool firearm to do a video on so this is an FM9 which is a Foxtrot mic the brand 9 millimeter pistol caliber carbine essentially is what this is they make a couple different versions different barrel lengths um, and different charging handle methods so this is not mine this is actually for uh, my grandparents uh, they needed to get a firearm, something better than a 22, you know, <laughs> because that's what a lot of older people have. Um, so, decided to get them something a little bit more modern. My grandfather definitely likes it. My grandma's not uh, too keen. It looks like a machine gun. So, with the world pretty much falling apart in front of our eyes, and uh, the Second Amendment is heavily being attacked, they definitely needed to get something other than a friggin' 22. So first of all, I'm just going to start from the back and go to the front on this gun. So on the back of this, we have an SBA-3 pistol brace. I have one of, I have two of these, actually, um, and they're fantastic. They're a little bit loose in the buffer tube, at least this one, just a little wobble. No big deal, though. It does have a QD sling point on the back. There's none on the front, but with M-Lock, you could mount one. And as an example, this is my AKV. And it's got a sling mount here that I attached with the um, M-Lock slot. And then, of course, the one on the SBA-3. So, you can do a similar setup with this gun. If you're, you know, a lefty, you can have it here, up here, or righty here to here. But, um, there's really no interest in uh, using a sling on this gun. On my AKV, I definitely like the ability to be able to do that. Of course, we have a metal buffer tube, a standard A2 pistol grip. The receiver is metal, of course. It's pretty beefy. It reminds me of like a billet style receiver. It has a standard selector switch from safe to fire, just like that. Now on the receiver, the magazine catch is not ambi, but it is huge to release. It's in a fantastic spot. You can actually reach it with your trigger finger. The magazines do drop free pretty well, as you see there with the bolt closed. And with it open, it'll shoot out as well, pretty well. Not quite as fast. Now, in terms of the magazines, I'll go ahead and mention those while I'm on this subject. I have two of the KCI branded ones. They're Gen 2 is what they say. Now, these are made in Korea, but there's, you know, KCI USA. So I don't know if they have like a U.S. distribution, but I don't think they make them here. But regardless, they're exact copies of Glock mags. These are two 17 rounders. So these would fit in a standard Glock 17. My brother has a Glock 17, which is pretty cool. So, you know, compatible mags. Um, they are steel lined and the outside is polymer. So they're really light. Plastic feed lip and, or I'm sorry, plastic follower, metal feed lip because it's uh, got the inside lining. Now this one is... Uh, loaded with 15 rounds, I believe. Yeah, 15 of some defensive ammo that I'm going to make sure feeds through this gun. They're going to be using this ARX uh, 9mm ammo as a defense cartridge. Now, I have 15 in here and then 5 left in here that I'm going to shoot off to make sure the gun cycles with this stuff. That's very important to make sure the gun cycles. It is a blowback, a pretty heavy bolt. So I want to make sure this stuff is not PUD you know, rounds. This is 65 grain and it's, it's advertised at 1600 feet per second, 1650. Uh, very fast ammunition, but it's made of a uh, composite. What do they call it? It's a copper polymer composite. You can see on the back, it's very high velocity. It says low recoil, uh, barrier blind, um, and it's devastating effective, devastatingly effective. Um, they say that the shape of the bullet will help with like the dispersion of um, hyd hydraulic displacement terminal energy transfer so whatever the way it spins it's uh, supposed to cause some damage so and it's supposed to be a defensive round where it will stop so if you miss and hit a wall and if it hits metal or like drywall or I mean not drywall but wood it'll stop and disintegrate pretty well through drywall it'll probably keep going but if it hits something hard like a metal object or even like really hard wood, like two by fours in the walls, it'll it'll stop pretty good. I'm pretty confident. I've seen some barrier tests because we have a ETS 30 round magazine fully loaded with the same stuff. 
So this is their home defense magazine. Basically, there's 30 rounds. The whole 31, but I just put 30 in there just to download it. Uh, that's a lot of firepower in there. So I'll show you what it looks like. There it is. With the magazine in, the bolt is back. It does have a bolt lock, and it is serrated in a different way. Can you see that? You see the serrations on the bolt lock? It's just a different pattern. It looks pretty cool. It's like a golf ball style or whatever. It also has, their logo is a four-leaf clover FM products. FMP9, Boise, Idaho. Pretty cool. Uh, U.S. made, of course. It's got eight screws on the handguard. I heard that these handguard screws will come loose when you shoot it, so I blue loctite every single one of them, and we'll see how it holds up. I actually had to take the rail off to get the accessories on, so when I put the rail back on, I just loctited them. On the top of the gun, we have a Firefield red dot. Uh, this is a fantastic red dot. I own one of these myself on my SIG 5.56, which is a 223 5.56 pistol, so Obviously, it's going to hold up just fine on the 9mm. This being a blowback design, it'll have a little bit less recoil than that SIG, which I use the short mount on my SIG. I also gave them a spare battery, because the sight does come with a battery that I put in there, but I made sure that they have a spare in there, just in case. So obviously, this is an M-Lock rail system on the front. It is um, a nice handguard, really, rail system, rather. Um, I am a huge fan of the Black Slate Company that makes these handguards and hand stop on my AR pistol, my 5.56-223-1. I have the same basic setup. Um, what it is, is basically covers, left, right, and bottom. And that's for when it heats up. I didn't want my grandparents to like burn themselves, but they're probably never going to get this warm enough to even feel that. So maybe at the range, after putting a decent amount of rounds through it, it may get warm enough. It's just on there for looks and for feel, essentially so they know um, where to put their hands. Actually, it's very instinctive. In fact, when my grandmother picked it up, she put her hands right there, and she was like, oh, that's where it goes, right? Because it just looks instinctive, the plastic covers there. And then I told her that this is so their hand doesn't get past the gun. So they can... It is a front charger, so there's no charging handle back here. It is in the front. That's what you see this part for. It is plastic. Some people were complaining about the quality of it. Um, and just the way it functions. I like it. I really do because the T-handle gets annoying for those people that run ARs regularly. A lot of people like the T-handle. I didn't really care for it. Um, on every gun at least. It can be switched from the left to the right side which is pretty cool. So it could be charged from this side. So the barrel stops here and then this portion is a forward blast deflector or whatever they call it. Um, essentially, it's supposed to shoot all of the gas forward. There's no vents for the sides, um, so it's not a muzzle breaker compensator. It's just straight out of the end of the gun. But the barrel only stops it stops here, seven inches, and so that's a good two and a half inches itself. So I'm not sure how the gun's going to shoot. I've never actually shot one of these. Um, my AKV right here has a muzzle brake on it and since these are nine millimeter i mean nine millimeters really doesn't produce that much muzzle energy anyways so this isn't doing a whole lot on the gun it's mainly for looks but it does disperse it all around i do have to regularly clean that muzzle brake because it does get dirty with this i don't think you'd have that problem it should just shoot it straight out this thing is just a basic mil spec trigger it's pretty gritty now that will break in i've just been dry firing it a couple times but no actual rounds through it so it takes like a good 200 rounds for triggers to break in fully i i think at least i also brought my akv out pretty much just to compare uh, the akv is definitely larger in terms of uh heft weight Barrel length, pretty much all the classes. It's just a bigger gun. And um, the magazines on the AKV are definitely a better. Now, I was considering buying the ARV that Palmetto State released not too long ago that uses the Scorpion mags like this gun. But there, the, AR, the ARV is $1,000, I'm pretty sure, for like a 10 and a half inch version, 1000 bucks. This gun right here, the FN Products, was $700. It's like $699. So
So it made more sense to save the money, $300 less, and just buy the AR platform, buy FM products instead of going with the ARV. The reason why I like the ARV more is because the mags are a lot better. The Scorpion Evo mags are just top tier. I mean, Glock mags are still cool and all, but I would prefer the Scorpion pattern mags. I think a lot of people would agree because they make 20 round mags. They make short mags for them as well. You don't have to have the 35 really long ones. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you on the next one. What's up, boys? All right, we're out here shooting the FM Products 9mm. This is the 7-inch barrel version. I have about 14 or 15 rounds of Wolf Steelcase 9mm, just 115 grain FMJ. And then I have 115 grain 15 rounds of Gecko 9mm. The target is about 50 yards or so. You'll hear it. low recoil.